man so dogecoin is up over 65 percent from its june lows after elon musk has officially acquired twitter yes elon musk has bought twitter for 44 billion dollars is now the time to start taking dogecoin seriously is it finally going to be more than what is just considered a meme coin and actually have real utility for the day-to-day -day people in this video we're going to take break down the what's going on in the macro economy because dogecoin is on an absolute tear here back to levels here at around eight cents from a lower than five cents just in june so this is an insane pump here on dogecoin we're coming towards some resistance but we're forming a really critical pattern which i do want to walk you through as well but why is this all happening well we know elon musk finally closes the twitter acquisition he walked in the other day literally with a sink in his hand throwing the kitchen sink at twitter and we know there's gonna be a bunch of layoffs a bunch of rejiggling the tesla technicians will be in the engineers will be in looking at the code and he's not acquiring this business over the odds because by the way he's paying a lot more than twitter is worth to just sit there and do nothing he's going to want to shake up twitter and one of the ways which he's rumored to do so is to build in a crypto wallet which could potentially integrate with dogecoin and this has got a lot of the doge enthusiasts really exciting and even the average people here you can see in the charts the volume coming in now on doge is huge over the last few days and a lot of people are now thinking hang on a second elon musk is such a hardcore dogecoin fan there is no way he would pass up the opportunity of integrating dogecoin now why does this particularly make a lot of sense well we know that one of the areas twitter has really struggled at is in terms of making sure that you can monetize effectively now this is something that obviously elon musk is going to want to address and one of the key ways to try and address this is integrating cryptocurrencies so i'm pretty certain that at some point he's going to want to interface with web3 and a lot of people think he will use dogecoin as one of those on wraps obviously we know he accepts dogecoin for various of the tesla merchandise Dice and Tesla, um, will he come and do the same for Twitter? But more importantly, that's just surface level, accepting it for certain things in terms of merchandise. But what about actually integrating it into the app? Can people actually use Twitter to donate to a creator on Twitter, to tip somebody, to, to run events, to do different things? Can we use that to pay people? Can it become an almost PayPal type app? Because we know what's going on with PayPal, right? People are not happy with what PayPal have done in terms of charging whatever it is, two and a half thousand dollars for misinformation, just taking it from your PayPal account insane and elon musk who is ex paypal who built it does not agree with that so maybe he can turn twitter into a combined venmo cash app you know paypal social network all in one remember wechat in china does all of this it's that super app which every person uses and no doubt elon musk will want to be doing something similar he's not just bought twitter over the odds at 44 billion to just make it a place where people tweet and use threads no he's going to want this to control the whole space right Right? He's, you, you, he wants to be the WeChat of the Western world, no doubt about it. And in order to do that, he's going to need to integrate some sort of payment mechanisms. I'm pretty sure that that is why we're seeing some movement here on Dogecoin. Now, as we can see, when we zoom out, obviously, we are hugely, hugely retraced here on Dogecoin. And up till now, you're looking at it and going, hang on a second, look. Dogecoin has a huge user base, right? Loads of people love Dogecoin, they swear by it. But the question has always been, what is the utility around it? And that's the reality of it. It's sitting on tech. This is a fork from Bitcoin. So it's sitting on proof of work tech, which is 12 years old. And when you're looking at modern layer one solutions, modern cryptocurrencies that are being created, it, they do have far superior tech with higher transactions per second, higher throughput and higher block finality. You're not, you don't have that with Doge. And that's one of the concerns Elon Musk has raised uh, from the outset. You've also got the concerns around the proof of work emissions, right? It's not very green. And that's a bit of a concern as well. But outside of that, if we can bring some utility that's going to be the key driver here of Dogecoin. And, it was, and the reason it'd be a key driver is you can finally move away from this just being a social currency to one which is actually being used with real life use cases on a database that people actually buy into. Not just the Dogecoin community. It's got to be everybody that buys into this. Just the average Twitter user using Dogecoin. Not because they believe in Dogecoin and they want to fill their bags, but because there's utility to using the Dogecoin token to do what they want to do on Twitter. That is the pipe dream. That is what people are expecting. And that is why we're seeing some of the movement in the price. Now, what are the key levels you would be looking for here on Dogecoin? Well, you can see I've got some um, price targets mapped out there in terms of my support levels. But what I'm going to do with you guys now is I want to look at the Fibonacci extension. And so what we're going to do is we're very quickly going to take this Fibonacci extension and we're going to go from swing low very roughly here up to the swing high, which is that crazy wick up the top there during Saturday Night Live. Shout out in the comments if you remember that. And you can see here the Fibonacci ratio brings you 
to a 48 to 50 cent Dogecoin. And this is the kind of level which I would expect to see if we saw some meaningful integration with Twitter being announced. These are the kind of price points I think we can really start to work our way back up. Remember, this coin moves like crazy. These are the, just these are weekly candles here. Look how many weeks it took to go from virtually nothing up to here chasing that high point of 76 cents here on dogecoin so this thing can move very very quickly it's got a huge audience base everybody knows what dogecoin is and if it does start its next pump everybody will be jumping onto this the way i play with doge is i do play with it right i put a small bit of percentage on my portfolio into it and I, it's just a little bit of play money which i'm happy to understand that at this point it is considered a momentum play right i can't I can't put it in the same category as Cardano. I can't put it in the same category as an Algorand or a Phantom or any of these, but it doesn't mean you can't safely invest or play around with investing in these types of projects. But you've got to understand where is the momentum and where is the where is the flow of money going? Is it coming in? Is it going out? Because you could easily be left holding this bag, which on this week here got pumped all the way up to 66, 76 cents and then was sitting under 5 cents just in june so that's my take here on dogecoin let me know in the comments if you guys are buying dogecoin or if you're sitting back and just waiting to see what happens obviously you've got a lot of people who are trying to front run this and get in before elon musk makes an announcement my view on this is i don't think we're going to hear something straight away we may get some tweets teasing at this from elon musk he's good at that sort of stuff but i think he's got a lot of other things to fix and stabilize that twitter ship before he starts worrying about cryptocurrency and dogecoin but one thing is for sure he said he wants to stand by the average person he likes dogecoin as a movement and he sees it as a way of giving back to people as well so i i, I do see him continue to be on the doge side and push for things making tweets and keeping doge relevant for sure okay fit and greed index sitting at 30 we're starting to creep back up into a bit of fomo territory and that is simply because bitcoin is doing a good job at the current stage of staying above 20,000. now if we zoom in hit into the hourly and what you can see is we got our initial bounce out and what i was expecting was a retest and if you watch yesterday's video i said exactly that either we're going to retest at this white line here which is 20,400 roughly or we're going to need the full extent and come all the way down to 20,000 psychological level and that is what we did you can see we bounced perfectly off our 20,000 level we need to collect some support now i want to see that higher high come in you can see where my squiggly line is let me just show you what we need. We need that higher high to really come in. If I take my pen, we want to see this go up and post another higher high, higher low, higher high, and then you can get out of this mess from here. That's the route out for Bitcoin at this stage. That is what I'm looking out for here on the Bitcoin chart. If we look at the other pattern which we were forming, this was our descending triangle. And in and what you can see is again, we are we are making a nice breakout, right? We've come out of the pattern here. We've run a big pump up. We've come back down and we've created our low. And this is the important bit. When you have a big move to the upside, like we did when we broke out of this triangle, this is not confirmed until you create support. Because what goes up can just come down. If you just do this, you can easily drop down. But what's far stronger is something which has not done that, but has instead done this. Higher highs, higher lows. Why? Because this one is far greater because it's created support here, and it's created support here, and it's created support here. So you're less likely to see that after climbing up like this. Okay, that's very, very important. To identify here on the charts there's a big big difference between the former and the prior so that's something to look out for we are now breaking through back above our ema ribbon what we do want to look at is the four hourly and this is the key one because this is showing you what's happened when we retested what do we do all we've done is retest support from our ema ribbon so this is all looking good right now but the key test like i'm like i said is we've got to get above here we've got to get above that twenty one thousand level in order to keep this upward momentum going that's really really important we don't want to see us just now lose momentum create a lower high and start falling to the downside now there's a few mixed things going on here in the markets i mean if we jump on over to the markets you can see that the markets are actually reacting a little bit positively today okay so if we look at the us markets which have opened up a little while ago you see that the dow jones jumped 200 points okay so two percent up here almost on the dow Jones, S&P up 1.2 and the Nasdaq up 1%, despite poor tech earnings. So what we are seeing is that the Nasdaq is now struggling to keep pace with the Dow Jones. So the blue chip companies generally have performed better than the growth stocks. We know Facebook, we know Meta, we know Microsoft are weighing down on the Nasdaq. But remember, that's not necessarily a bad thing. As I explained in my video yesterday, by earnings coming in a little bit weaker, it puts a little bit of a noose around Jerome Powell's neck to say, hang on, maybe you can't do 75 basis points because companies are struggling. You're going to drive us into a recession. And so we're starting to see this price in, just like we predicted, guys. We saw this a little bit yesterday, and we've still got to 
couple of days before November the 2nd for this to climb. And what this is, is that 13% of the market is now pricing in 50 basis points, which is that ultimate pivot that we, that we which we've been waiting for. But it gets even more confused. You have to bear with me, guys, because what unwinds some of that is this. And that, and that is the U.S. economy rebounded in the third quarter. So the GDP figure came out yesterday after I posted my video, coming in at 2.6% versus 2.3% expected. Now, what does that look like? Well, let me explain. So let's go back three quarters ago, okay? In Q1, we were shown that we saw negative growth of 1.6. In Q2, we saw negative growth of 0.6, just here, okay? Two quarters of negative growth in a row consecutively, equals a, the technical definition of a recession. Don't care what anybody says, that's a recession, just like that is a recession there, okay, during the COVID period. Now, what we had from a political perspective was Biden coming out and telling Jerome Powell and the rest of them, Janet Yellen was saying the same thing, that, oh, it doesn't seem like we're in a recession because the labor market is really strong. Well, you're breaking the definition here, okay? And that is why I predicted, if you go back and watch my videos, I did an interview with Rob from Digital Asset News, which you should watch as well. I'll link that up. And in there, I gave my hypothesis. I said that they're going to show Q3 as positive. Now, why? Why? Was it not obvious? Because you've got the midterms. You've got the midterms coming up, and no doubt you're going to want to show some positive news, i.e. this, and maybe inflation coming down a little bit, fudge a couple of those numbers, and you look good going into your midterms. But here's the thing I think is going to happen. There is only so long they can smudge this data because soon it's going to become evident. When you see the labor market start to weaken because of the repetitive 75 base point rate hikes, when you see that company earnings are suffering, like we've just seen with various of the company earnings, including Amazon, which is down as much as 20% after producing poor earnings yesterday and forecast guidance. What we will see is another negative quarter. That is my prediction. If they're honest with themselves, they'll show another negative quarter and we're going to hear talks of a double dip recession, which is when you go into a recession, you dip back out and you dip back into a recession. I think that could be the narrative after the midterms, but before the midterms, they want to keep things positive. Okay, but here's the thing. Here's where things get a little bit confusing. So with company earnings coming in weak, that gives Jerome Powell the notion that, okay, I don't need to raise, uh, I don't need to raise interest rates. But by showing that the economy is growing by 2.6%, that provides air cover to Jerome Powell should he want to do another 75 base point rate hike. And that is why the majority of the market still at this juncture right now still thinks he's going to do 75 base points. Even though Canada pivoted, they did 50 basis points, Europe did another 75. Will the US next week do 50 base points? Will they pivot, which could really make the markets run? Or will they carry on with their 75 base points? I'm still sitting in the 75 base points camp. I would be shocked if they do 50 basis points. But it's less shocking now than it was this point when the CPI reading came and surprised everybody. Because when the CPI reading came a couple of weeks ago and we covered it, some of the market even priced in 100 base points. So to think just a couple of weeks on now that 15% of the market almost is pricing in a U-turn, a pivot to 50 base points. And this is a crazy roller coaster in the macroeconomics, but this is critical. We've got to monitor this because Bitcoin will not have its serious run until we've resolved that. Until we've seen that pivot, for the, pivot from the Fed, this is just but a relief rally. And we can take advantage of the relief rally. We can trade it using Bybit and Bitget links in the description. We need to understand that's just a relief rally into the arms of the bears who will be having extra sell pressure at a certain level. Now, whether they decide to try push the bears back down at 22, 23, 24, we don't know. Will they start putting pressure on us when we get to this line here? Maybe at 24? We don't know that just yet. But what, what is sure is that we are getting a nice move here. We are trying to form this big W pattern, which I've talked about for a long period of time. This is what we're monitoring, big W. And if we can form that W, which we're still a while away from, Okay, we need to get to 22 and then work our way to 24. That could give us a nice move up to 29, 30,000. That is what I'm watching. But the macroeconomics are super important. FOMC meeting next week. We will be covering on the channel. So make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you've got the bell notification switched on because sometimes YouTube doesn't alert you guys when I'm live. Make sure you go watch this video here so you're caught up on everything I said yesterday. And I'll see you in the next one.